Okay. I just I spaced out that I had a meeting today. <laughs> 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 well, also something was weird with the website because there were no meetings showing, and I'm sure I, you know, updated everything just a few days ago. I don't know. Maybe we're getting hacked by uh, Ajishanti or someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, even David uh, down under went to Awakening together and asked in their chat, you know, where where Paul was. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually, they know where I am more than I do. So, yeah, always call up awakening together. I just oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. I just I got just absorbed in. <laughs> he just muted himself. Got, a, got absorbed in some cactus. So, there. Succulents? No, cactus. I was just transplanting some and space. I just, do, I just do beautifully smiled at me, Paul, and said nothing. <laughs> so <I'll live. laughs> just the, the loving gazes right <laughs> oh, a bunch of loving gazes <laughs> no help but <laughs> uh is anybody new here mike i don't think so i hope we didn't lose anybody because of the uh snafu i don't know who's right, t well, do we know t do we know you t See if I can recognize who that is. Yeah, it's Tyler. I'm on a different computer. Oh, hi, Tyler. Oh, Tyler. Yeah, we know Tyler. Well, I was just sharing yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Can you hear me all right? All's well there? Very good. Well, I was just uh, sharing yesterday um, about uh, years ago, there used to be these Zen retreats in New York City, and you would uh, you would live as if you were homeless for seven days. But everyone who signed up for the retreat had a home. Yeah. <laughs> so while you're experiencing homelessness, it, there's a, a you travel lighter through it because you know you have a home. That's not really the, the experience of homelessness. So <laughs> this is, and in a reverse way, this is like the message. Like the time Ramesh Bausakar was talking with me and he said, you know, do you have a house? Yes, I, I have a place to live. And he says, well, do you work? I go, yeah. So he says, when you're at work, do you keep remembering that you have a house? Or you, do you chant that you have a house? No, no, I know I have a house while I'm work. And do you forget, you know, you have a house if you're on overtime at work? No, it doesn't matter how many hours at work I'm at. I don't. <laughs> I don't forget that I have a house. Yeah, it's just a clear knowledge. Uh, it doesn't come and go. It's not like it needs to be debated or reviewed every hour on the hour. So in effect, that's sort of what the message is like. If you are reality, uh, in a way, we're sure not showing that. <laughs> You would think that would be the basis of traveling later through what's happening. Yes, obviously, because usually the fear is that we're not going to get what we want or lose what we have or get hurt or something like that. And if it was true, as the Course of Miracles says in one of the lessons, you know, the attack thoughts are attacking your invulnerability. Yeah. So your invulnerability would what? Where was that? Where would that come from? Being ourselves reality. Yes. Yes. So we don't need a touchstone. We are the touchstone. Yeah, that's the point of the message, really. And so the most essential part of the message is the warnings that go with it. So, OK, I hope everyone here has had that uh, event where you may have uh, assumed you were a sheep. You may have lived as if you were a sheep. You may believe that you were a sheep. But sometimes something, somehow, you saw your reflection in the pond with an older lion, yeah? And you saw that you're a lion, yeah? You looked like a lion, your hair was like a lion, you roared like a lion, you're a lion. That immediate recognition of your own nature doesn't take time, yeah? It doesn't take hours and or years to erase the sheep. 
you were never the sheep, yes? It was never a fact that has to get null and voided. So what's getting negated isn't true, yeah? To negate something that's true is almost like a denial. To negate that which isn't true is clarity, yes? So the message is, hey, something has given us the sense that, uh, you know, what I'm looking for might be exactly where I seem to be. And as St. Francis says, what's looking is what we're looking for. And he doesn't have like 50 pages of requirements to be to be or to arrive at that which you're looking for. It's what's looking right now. So this is the assumption. This is the premise. And then we just turn it and we negate the false assumptions and the false premise. That's all. Yeah. Where do we negate the false premise and the false assumptions? Not from the false assumptions and the false premise, but from what we are. Uh, when can we access that now? You know, you don't access it, you are it. But let's say access it now, uh, where, here, yeah. Uh, when, at all times, yeah, yeah. So, um, Sometimes you get so engaged in what's happening, you forget everything like I did. <laughs> that I had a Wednesday meeting at seven o'clock. I had absolutely no idea I had one, none, until Amelia called me and then I got a text from Mike. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's a, a psychotic break could look like a spiritual awakening. You know, it's very close. It's very difficult to sort of discriminate between one or the other. <laughs> This happened, you know, this dawned on me somewhere along the line. And I was in a position of sharing and whatever was directing that sharing told me very, very clearly, you know, that's that. <laughs> yeah. And then I attempted to improve myself to be a better vessel for that message to come through. But the, the message that comes through doesn't demand anything. It didn't want me to become more spiritual, that's for sure. And it just set me off on sort of mundane tasks and uh, <laughs> it, it lowered my targets and uh, basically kept me pretty dumb in a way, especially concerning this topic. So and uh, it hasn't changed. You would think if you were sitting and you were open and something was coming through you, if it wanted you to do something else, you would know, you know, because you've been moved by it for a while. You get a sense of its of its direction in comparison with the mental direction. So you would feel like if you got a solid thing and says, all right, Paul, it's time to add on to this, you know? We've got to do some work. We've got to get ourselves into a fit spirits condition. We've got to learn how to maintain it. And we have to seek for the higher stars. And none of this just chilling out, feeling okay, having a sense of uh, ease and comfort. No, you got to get on that spiritual horse and ride it. But I never got that message. No, for many, 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 many years. So I've come to a conclusion, you know, it could be proven wrong, but that, you know, this is the last answer, at least where I'm sitting. Yeah. And it took away any need for any other answer concerning this topic, which is an incredible answer. Because a lot of answers in this world lead to some more... <laughs> You need more answers and better answers and more refined answers and higher answers, extreme answers. But no, this just basically is it. And like I joke around at the group, you know, what's new in non-duality 2022? Nothing. It's, yeah, the fact hasn't changed. The imitation hasn't changed. The message hasn't changed. What has become maybe clearer over the years is the activity of what we're not, yeah, yeah. Because you don't, uh, 
there's not more seeing, but there's seeing more. Yeah, you see more of what you're not. You get to see uh, the finery and the subtle stuff, and you recognize the this uh, magical ingredient of time in the dreaming. Yeah, and how uh, where if we were in the ocean, we would feel the currents because they'd be wet and you'd be forced somewhere. But these are like dry currents. We don't even pick it up that we're being moved. But seeking and and which is of time is moving us constantly. Yeah, it's almost like one of those moving sidewalks at the airport. You see a nice little display you like to stop at, but they got railings and you can't get off. You can't stop the freaking thing. Yeah. And therefore, oh, I really liked it. And then you just keep going. You just keep going. What happens with this message? The same thing. You hear it and then you hear it again and you hear it again. And you go to so many vessels to get the taste of wine. You miss the wine. Yeah. You now got a, you're a wine consumer. You've tried so many bottles, but have you actually drank the wine? Yeah. You may have an incredible spiritual wine cellar. But have you actually drank the wine? Yeah. Your head, you can't convince, you know, it will say yes or no, no, but you know. I mean, because if what you are is what is, if what's looking is what you are, that's look, that looking isn't going to be directed or sent out on, to, on a chore or focused or become like a laser light. It's just awareness. It's just, a, it's just, a, you know, you can't describe it, but the feeling of it is that it's always on and really you have very little to do with it. Yeah. It's just on and you're a part of what becomes aware of because of the onness. Now we say we're the awareness, but we're really not. Yeah, the awareness is of this, and then the mental state, the awareness of this, somehow in its fucking bizarro logic, implies that you are that which you're aware of. Yeah, so as Hoang Po tried to clear up, whatever can be perceived, or let's say whatever can be aware of, cannot be the awareness. Yes, yeah, so whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. So we seem to be aware of this figure, this this thing we call, we're aware of feelings and thoughts and stuff like that, but we can never be aware of the awareness, yeah? You can't use what you are to find what you are. You can't see what you are with what you are. You can see everything else, but there's nothing to see, yeah? So, the next book, you know, yes, you know, the the event at the pond, and then what happens when the young lion leaves the pond? The mental state kicks in with the story of being the sheep. It immediately claims the lion, the being of the lion, and turns it into an experience the sheep had. And now without, he's, he's not living with the older lion. He can't be dragged up to the pond every day. And so now he goes basically off and he has this incredible peak experience of a lion, even though it was just being lion, as the sheep. And now that peak experience of being a lion or experiencing a lion as the sheep drives the sheep crazy because it tries to go back there as a sheep. It tries to stabilize it as a sheep where there's no going back to where you never left and you don't stabilize being. Being is being, yeah? There's not unstable being and then and stable being. This is a stability we are dreaming of in experiences, and it doesn't, it's not available. Yeah. You know, you may have hit the perfect temperature for you, 74 degrees at three in the afternoon. Now it's down to 61 at seven, yeah? I wanted to freeze it and let it always be 74. Good luck. Yeah. 
You may, you may if you control everything and live in a freaking room, but you're going to miss out of a lot of flowers blossoming and birds singing and shit like that. Maybe you can stabilize it in that super conditional controlled environment, but there's so much lost. Why would you want to stabilize that? What you want to stabilize is what's happening. Yeah. You want it make to make it always happening, and that's not available. So, yeah, the mental state claims whatever it's brought into contact with. It takes time to claim something. Yeah, that's the birth of time. So that which comes after, which is the sense of being the seeing, which is always preceded by the, the sense of being the seer, which is always preceded by the act of seeing, that never changes. We start at an after that's implied to be before. That's what's so freaking confusing. Yes? That's what non-duality clears up. Yeah. It's not relief for Paul. It's relief from Paul. Yeah. Be very clear. It's relief from Paul. Paul may be seeking and wanting so much relief right now, and you're relieved of that. Now, here, yeah? Now you would call it Paul being relieved of Paul, but that's not what's happening. There's a relieving of from Paul, yeah? This idea, yeah? Even though that idea is chomping at the bit, still driven crazy, still seeking, still doing that, you're not, when you take its temperature, you don't, don't call it your temperature. Yes. And you've lost interest in all its freaking dramas and highs and lows and yes to no's. And I'm never fucking passing this shit on. Yeah. yeah. We had a lovely girl I've met before yesterday and, you know, she was trying to, she was looking for relief as the problem from the problem. Yeah. It won't work. If you get a little relief, it produces an addiction. Yeah, the mental state gets sort of addicted to that hit. And therefore, it doesn't realize its agitation about getting another hit is, is why the hit doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, because now you got relief from it, but now you're trying to get relief as it again. Yeah, this is what needs to be pointed out. Yeah. You may only need one little over the pond to get that you're a lion, but you need you may need a lot of repeating of what you're not. Yeah. Because the claiming is not of from what you are, the claiming is from what you're not. That's the thief. Yeah. That's the thief that tells you it owns the house. And if you're not in the house, you may believe the story. But if you're in the house and you see it come in and then it runs this story that it's the owner, you, you just don't buy it anymore. Yeah. Because you're not out to lunch. A lot of shit can be sold to us when we're out to lunch. So that's the message. Uh, again, I apologize. Completely, completely spaced out. <laughs> well, so yeah, if anyone has anything to say tonight, uh, or whatever, Raise if, there's, your hands. if there's any uh, unclarity about what we're attempting to put out there, just ask, and we're more than happy to share. Yeah. Uh, David, down under, David has got his hand up. Good day, Paul. Good day, everybody. Um, I don't know if you said it, Paul. I don't know where I heard this, but it's there's an old saying, uh, and you just said something that reminded me of it then, whereas the best salesman in the world can't sell you something if you don't buy it. And that, that, that's that's exactly what you just said, didn't it, right? It's funny because you may have said that saying to me at some stage. Oh, I haven't got a fucking clue. But, yeah, it just reminded me of what you said. It's a real simple way of putting it. Yeah. 
Well, it's like the turkey event we talk about where I go to a rug emporium with the knowledge I don't have a house or a floor, F-O-O-R. So no matter how great the, fl- the rugs are or the presentation of the rugs or the promise of what the rug will do for me, I'm not into buying a rug. <laughs> I don't have any place to put it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he's <laughs> another traveling and they tell me they can fold it up and put it in my backpack so i'm going to go all around asia with a rug in my (laughs) here's here's another funny one you just reminded me of again your couch story that you tell just before just before i started coming to these meetings i went through i reckon i can't remember three months of anguish and shit over getting a couch for my upstairs here at work, right? And like, and then the funny thing was when it finally came, I, I so I looked everywhere for couches. I put fucking like hours into a search for a couch. I really did. And then I found one on eBay, you know, and, and, and it was like, oh, this beautiful looking couch. It really was, right? If I, I'll take a picture of it and show you guys because when it came, I mean, a, a five-year-old child couldn't lay on it. It's about three, three and a half feet long. It's, about, it's, it's just the most useless couch you've ever seen. You know? And when I first came to these and you said the story about the couch, like that really hit home because I'd just done it, you know. And even to the point when I got this thing in, in the upstairs, the room was still pretty empty and I actually went, I fucking need a rug. I've got to get a rug now. I really did it, you know? That's right. That's yeah. right. It never ended. Now yeah. I go up now I go up there and I eat my lunch. All I've got up there is a table and a microwave. And I eat my lunch and I look at the couch every day and piss myself laughing. And I don't worry about putting anything else in the room, but I don't care at all. Yeah. I forgot that story. That was uh yeah, that's an old story we used to tell yeah (laughs) it's just the the way the head see the head in a way tries to mask its nature of being agitation yeah with the idea it's really looking for a place to rest or it's going to stop if this if you get this or you go that or if this condition shows up but it can't because there's no thing called mind there's no mind that has these mental processes. There's just a, com- a culmination of mental processes and shit that we call mind, yeah? And all of them are activities. Yeah, yeah, always. And therefore, because of its, that, that nature, it can't find peace. The only way peace can be found is by not looking, yeah? Truly. Because if you're looking, it's with you and it can't find it because it won't recognize it. Once, if it runs into peace, it's going to use it as another topic of agitation. Yeah, It's going to go, but I may not be in peace tomorrow. Yeah, So there, it goes on and on and on. So, uh, you know, the, the horse is dead. Just get off. Yeah, Just get off. I know you like the horse. And, you had, you know, whatever, this nice leather saddle and shit. You can go back there later and strip it clean. But, man, just get off the horse in a way. Well, how does that look? Well, when the head says you're on the horse or you're off the horse, you don't believe you're on the horse and you don't believe you're off the horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just, there's no need to believe while you're riding. I'm, when I'm riding, I don't need to believe I'm riding. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I'm surfing, I don't need to believe I'm surfing. I'm surfing. <laughs> it's, yeah. So when the being is obvious, you're not, you know. <laughs> I, I don't believe I'm being. There's being and then there's beliefs. Yeah, there's beliefs. Seen from being, the beliefs don't hold the same water they do when they're held from the mental state. 
because the mental state will believe almost anything. <laughs> if you <laughs> maybe if I stayed in that rug emporium by the eighth day, I would have bought a rug. I don't know. It may have broken me down, but it was so obvious. I didn't have a flaw. I just, it would have taken a large, a large amount of banging away. Yeah. So, and you would have had to buy a house. You know? <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. I would have had to buy a house. <laughs> so, yeah. Which, which like, wouldn't have been like a handy, which wouldn't have been a handy thing to track carry with you on a world trip. I wouldn't think a house, you know, like you could just keep that in the backpack. Hey, Dave, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else tonight? Yeah, I wanted to thank David too because that's exactly it, right? You, the, the whole house of cards that got built on buying the rug in the first place, and so it all reinforces each other. <laughs> I <laughs> know I really yeah. did need the house. I really did need the, that and that and that. You but totally forgot about the rug. <laughs> and then the head has made an investment in it. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. I, so the story of the Poopa Scoopa has that message in it where the guy becomes the master of picking up shit and he's a circuit speaker and he's selling tons of Poopa Scoopas, autograph models and He's got it going on, so he thinks he has the solution to the problem, which is the shit, yeah? And then when he hears someone come over his house and say, hey, I think I got a solution for you. He said, I, I, I am the solution, man. I'm Mr. Pooper Scooper. I'm a quick, I can pick up shit quicker than anyone else. My machines work better than anyone else. And the guy listens and he goes, okay, well, just find the dog, you know? If you find the dog, that's the that's the cause of the shit. Get rid of the dog. There goes the shit. Yeah. But at this point, we're taking ourselves to be the dog. So the dog has convinced us that without the dog, we're dead. It's going to be voidville. It's going to be completely empty. <laughs> of course, you know what I mean? The system will try to keep convincing you to rely on the system. Yeah. Yeah. So we have that story about the skin and the snake to try to point that out. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can see the mental activity. Yeah. You can see it or become aware of it. And, uh, and there's a lot of, uh, like a critical mass, you see it, you see it, you see it, and then something clicks and you get a big, big vision of something, yes? And then you see more, more, and then more. And uh, you see uh, time is sort of whipped up with this act agitation of mind, the mental processes, yeah? And all this goes on and on and on. And yet the whole, f we are the lighting of the whole event yeah we are the dreaming of the dreaming yeah we're not one aspect of it we're the dreaming of it the whole enchilada yeah now we think when when we say we're the dreaming the picture pictures themselves as a body as the, the dreaming no the body is the dreamt yeah be clear about that the body is the dreamt. We're not talking to the body and telling it it's the dreaming. Yeah, it's very clear. It's not, it's established in the dreamt. Yeah, there's no need to try to, you know, it would just drive it to more fucking craziness, you know. So basically, we're talking to the dreaming yeah, about the dreaming. And therefore, when the dreaming learns about when the dreaming learns about the dreaming, it learns about the dream. Yeah. And then it's and it's held as not you. Yeah. It finally there's a pure negation in there. The dreamt is a part of the dreaming. It is not that which is dreaming. Yes. Yeah. So that first note is put in its right place. And then you hear the whole song differently. 
Yeah, you hear the whole song differently just by the, ch and it's not even changing of the note. We were hitting the fourth note as if it was the first note. It isn't, yeah? And it went, it's gone its own freaking way. Yeah, and it makes no sense to most of us, really. Once that, when that bell hits from the first note, there's something, it resonates as that word, you know? It triggers, and then you're at the before, so to speak, yeah? and. And then you can hear that you can hear a whole new meaning in the same notes being played because the construction of the song has been deconstructed just by the recognition of the first note or basically seeing the fourth note is not the first note really that's basically all it is yeah so you see what you're not and then there's a finding out of what you are yeah you find out what it's like to be what you are, all the while in an, in an appearance of what went on. That's what you find out, yeah? It's not a you finding out, there's a finding out, yeah? So now what used to, the mental state used to direct the vision, now, you're, now something else is directing the vision. So instead of a myopic, focused, obsessive view, it's more of a panoramic, relaxed, yeah? And you actually see a whole lot more when you're not looking to see anything, yeah? There's a whole lot more available when you're not looking for something to be available. It's amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm happy we're in this together, yeah? So by sharing it, it gives it more life. And in this false life, we need to give it life, yeah? Because this false life will suffocate it, it will. Yeah, it goes against its whole agenda. You're not, it's not going to be your ally. It's not going, it's going to drag its feet on the ride. It's not going there merrily. Yeah, because it sees if reality, yeah, if I'm that which is blocking reality, then I have to be destroyed. It's not into that. Yeah. <laughs> It wants this story of Paul to continue. And so in its logic, the last place it wants to go is why is where we are. It doesn't matter if, if you say you got to get there, it will sign up for that. But if you if there's the statement you are there, it's not into that at all. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So hey, thank you. It's nice to see you, Dave. And everyone really. Yeah, thanks for making it tonight. Uh, Gary. Hey. <clears throat> yeah, I got stairs, overalls, everything I need right here. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, thanks, Paul, for keeping this going. I appreciate it. Um, I agree that the, the more we share it and the more we report it, the, you know, the better for all of us. And so by way of that, I would just going to share how uh, the other day I was just one morning just sitting here and I started noticing the ang anxiety around things over which I have no control and just kicking back and seeing wow, wow look at the amount of time there is anxiousness about like the weather and 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 then once I noticed yeah man i go to i don't want to say i there's a going to there's an anxious mental process around the weather and then look uh, the same thing happens oh people what about what people think of uh, gary the, and then it, it went it kind of jumped it was like wow there is so much anxiety around wow you name it you know what my wife thinks of me, what other people think of me, whether I'm going to get things done next week. It just, you know, like, I, I don't know, just one thing after another. And then, and then at that point, it becomes funny, you know, because obviously none of that anxiety benefits anybody that I like. So... I don't know. I just I, I think this is just by way of reporting what you said. It's good to to notice this over and over again because it 
it's like easy to get pulled back into the lobster pot view of you know who we the mental process thinks we are and so yeah i'm i'm happy to contribute to this by way of whatever you know and that experience so um anyway keep up the good work thanks thank you and gary listen uh, the only thing we can think is what we think other people are thinking of us. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. It's just pure projection. <laughs> yeah, projection, yeah. <laughs> Most people are thinking the same thing at the same time. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Are you thinking about me, Paul? Really? Really? <laughs> There's a difference between loving someone and thinking about them all the time. Thinking about them all the time usually ends up in stalking charges. Yeah. <laughs> Loving them is something else. <laughs> Do you think about me all the time? Luckily for you, no, I don't. <laughs> if I did, yeah. <laughs> so, and we have another, we got to move on, Gary, to Angie. All right. Thanks, Gary. Gary. That's a good subject, though. It's like you, you, you could almost have like a greeting card. Uh, love is uh, letting others know that they don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> no, 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 they're so important. There's no need to think about them. Yeah, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. You, you can do a greeting card line now. Yes. Well, yeah. If this all dries up, I'll be standing on the street. I'll talk for food. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Angie has her hand up. Angie. Angie. Hi, everyone. So uh, I want to add the, uh, I mean, I feel like uh, I need some answers here for myself, but uh, adding on top of um, the story of uh, myself, adding that kind of sense of uh, responsibility. So say in the story of the lion and the sheep, Say the lion has some cubs around uh, it. And uh, um, so the lion raises the cubs as uh, sheep, right? And uh, because the sheep around kind of, uh, you know, influence that uh, way. And uh, um, so uh, the lion, even though it sees them as uh, lions, uh, it cannot get through to them to tell them, hey, you're lions, you're not sheep like the rest of them. <laughs> and uh, also maybe for the lion. Um, so say the lion is not yet at that stage when it sees itself as a lion. Uh, but... Uh, uh, it kind of has glimpses of it being a lion by looking at, uh, down at the water. But then there's that responsibility. Oh, I still have these cubs around. I have to raise them as sheep because, you know, we're living in this uh, world of sheep. So can you speak a little bit about that? Um, because it, it seems like... Um, if you look at the, the audience in this satsang too, there's certain category of uh, people, you know, maybe younger people, single people, or after uh, um, certain age, uh, where there's a little bit of uh, independence, maybe less responsibilities uh, for other uh, family members, you know. So. Um, and I know you're saying but like Angie, that this, this is available yeah. to everyone at all the time, uh, but there seems to be a, a need for certain availability 
in one's life to, to actually be a seeker, kind of. Uh, well, that, but see, that's a description from that side, you know, let's say the sheep side. Yeah. Of how hard it is to stay a lion. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, uh, that may be true or it may appear to be true, but it's not true. Yeah. There's always going to be something that is an exemption of that story. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the idea, whatever you're doing, is not to do it as a sheep or a lion, but just to see there's no one there in a way. Just question the sense of Angie as Angie, the mother, the this, the that, and maybe mothering will go on unimpeded by a large weight called Angie, yes? Mm. And maybe Angie will be moved in the moment, maybe to direct the kids as a sheep, all the while Angie, what Angie is, will speak louder than what she says. So maybe the lion will come through the teachings of how to make it in this life as a sheep, yes? But the idea of placing the conditions of this world to supersede the underlying context of this whole event, I don't see it that way. I haven't had kids, so I don't have an experience of what it would be like. Uh, but Amelia does. She has four kids, and there's a whole lot of underlying communication that's never said or talked about or and it's just the space of the house and the people in it have a large effect yeah and uh yeah so again <sighs> you know it's like we want to I want to remember I'm a lion, but I'm wearing sheep's clothing. Yes. So I've got to, you know, get my hair straightened out every few months and wear loose clothing, no wool and shit like that. Or I'd feel guilty about wearing one of my brethren or something like that. Yeah. And then you have this idea in that sheep of, of non-duality, which we have no idea of, really. You don't have no idea. And, uh, you know, I just believe you got to be careful uh, with a pledging allegiance to that, yeah, to the reality of this dreaming. And just, uh, I don't use non-duality to deny what's happening here, yeah, and the relationships and stuff like that. There's a negation of all that as being real, but I'm not in the act of trying to not to deny it while I'm taking it to be real. Yes? Yes. So I act like a Roman when you're in Rome. Does that mm -hmm. make, make me a Roman? No. But I don't have an experience of bringing up young Romans. So I can't tell you what it would be like. But uh, the idea that what you're saying and implying is, yeah, people get a certain point. It may look like that, but it doesn't have anything to do with the fact. Yes. Just like it looks like I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. That brought me to the point of arriving at that state that screams out on having never left. So, yes, while we're in the world of stories, it looks like things have lined up. I'm independent or this or that. I've had a terrible life. It moved me to want to look for something else. Yet, when that becomes obvious, it negates the whole reality or relativity of that story. It mm -hmm. does. Yeah. So you may have it all the way you go, but when something drops, part of what drops is that story. It is based on having never left, based on being ourselves reality based on what's looking is what we're looking for. Yeah. So, yeah, I understand when someone, maybe there's something in you that's not really of you that wants to integrate this understanding into a, into the way the life is here. Yeah. I would just see if, who is that? Is that you? Mm -hmm. 
that wants that. And then maybe it'll come to pass, but without you wanting it. Yeah. Maybe you'll see how uh, the lion, all the while the activity of the sheep are being displayed, all there are is lions. Yes. Yeah. And I don't care if you take something to be real. You're, it's not real. And you can only take it to be real. You're going to go to bed. It's all, all going to get erased. Yeah. So, yeah. But I don't have experience here with directing kids. Thank God. <laughs> that would be a, that would have been scary, I feel. <laughs> so, so I can't even direct the animals. They're directing me. Probably the kids are directing you, not more you directing the kids, really. <laughs> when the kids come here, they're the major energy, not the mom or me. And then they actually get beaten by the dog. The dog's the dominant energy of the whole place. Sleeps anywhere it wants to. Fucking has me throwing a ball a couple hours a day. You know, Jesus, if you look, if you took like an energetic imprint, it would be the dominant imprint. <laughs> As an action figure. <laughs> so, yeah. But I don't know. I don't have. I can't speak of it about experience, and it sounds good, but I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe that you have to be chilled out or something. I don't. You know, it may look like that, but that's see, it already is, and then it may look like it any way it wants. But the looking like it doesn't produce that it's already is. Already is may look like this. It may like we've feel itself here in these patterns. Oh, yes, people who've gotten disappointed in seeking. Yes, just like in AA, there's there seems to be having a, a bottom is necessary. So you take it so far, then it hits a point where it'll be as if it never existed. You won't even think about drinking or using ever again for 34 years. Yes. So in that level, I said, oh, yeah, that had a lot that had a lot to do with this, but I don't see it with non-duality, no. Yeah, no. And, and I realized that this is the ship's perspective, you know, with added layers of uh, difficulty. But in fact, it's just the same story. And the story is a story. It doesn't matter how simple the storyline is or complicated. It's still a story. Well, yes, and it may, you know, uh, you know, add weight to the story, but it doesn't change the fact. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's sort of like the idea that we're all awake and we can seem to be awake to that or we can seem not to be awake to that, but it doesn't change the fact that there's awakeness. Yeah. 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 So maybe in a way here, most people are probably looking for a seemingly being awake to it. Yeah. And they're hoping that would stabilize as a sheep, so to speak. Yes. Which is precarious because that's a dream of a, of a sheep. If the sheep is dominant, it wants the, the experience of being a lion to stabilize as the sheep. Yeah. But if you can see through that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe seeing the other sheep as lions too, even though, you know, they see themselves as sheep, maybe they're lions too. That would help. Yeah, um, I think sometimes after a while, you, you lose, a, a, you know, like in, you ever see the old movie Terminator or something? Yeah, so this yeah. robot from the future drops in. And so when he's looking around this club, he's got these little dirt, 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 and puts a square on it and da, 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 da. Yeah, to me, that's the head giving name and form and everything, this shit. After a while, there's just looking at people. I don't think, I don't say anything to myself about it. <laughs> it's just look, looking, you know, there's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. And, uh, and it's just been stripped of thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't usually have a strategy. Like I'm going to look at like a sheep as a, you know, I just fucking whatever. 
I really truly believe that, you know, we're at work, but we have a house, you know, we have a home, we're at work here, we're at, we're sitting, we're in a seat assignment, yeah, and that may have us go to other countries, but I never forget home, you know, I have, that's a, I'm convinced of the fact that I, that which I am doesn't come or go, doesn't expand and contract, doesn't get lost and then finds itself. It doesn't say bye-bye and then gets teased into reappearing. It's just on completely, yeah? And my little moving and trying to get everything shook up really doesn't change much, yeah. So I've been, I just lost a lot of the interest in following the movement and trying to, you know, and um, yeah, I meet people and this really, I don't come away with any thought about it most of the time. Yeah, so yeah, I'd much rather meet a person before thought, I would tell you the truth, yes? Yeah, and I love to leave without a thought. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I think that's really the essence of traveling lighter is, uh, a loss of interest in thoughts, yeah, and really the loss of interest in thinkers, into the thinker, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I almost missed this thing. I didn't think about it. <laughs> it completely like it never existed, completely. I never, I don't think I have ever had a meeting at Wednesday at seven. It was just completely gone. <laughs> That's how I sleep. It's awesome. I you know, just, just fine. <laughs> it's like eating a meal with no leftovers, yeah? You meet a person, you eat the whole thing, and then when the person leaves, there's no leftovers. It's just, you meet another person, yeah? You have these vignettes all day, yeah? <laughs> the dog shows up, the cat, the cactus, the shit like that. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Who knows what I, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's nice to see you, Angie. I uh thank you. Yeah. I I got the feeling. I feel like I mean it it's penetrated somehow. Oh great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well that's the joy of it. You don't need to know how. Yeah. 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 You'll recognize it more and more. Hmm. You must really know something when you recognize it and there's no thought about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It's almost as if the thoughts are outside the door. They're waiting agitatingly for you to come back out <laughs> to think about some shit. <laughs> what you do is you fake it. You walk out the back door and you come behind them and you can see the thoughts. <laughs> you throw a stone and they go running into that. <laughs> are not ours it's beautiful really honey you don't know how valuable that is uh, because thoughts have been given this power to make a lot of shit what it is yes we think about it and then the thinking about it it's like the uh you know in those old police shows they have that police uh person who would 
do a drawing of supposedly the the suspect and shit, you know? That's why thinking is like, yeah. If you live in it's not that necessary most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So all right, thank you, honey. Thanks. Thank you, Angie. And we have Eileen. Eileen. Is there time? Do you think there's time? Oh yeah. There's okay. no time, time, Eileen. And he was late. So <laughs> Yeah. I was so... late. Oh what is this? <laughs> This is a sort of punishment. I'm late. I have to take more questions. <laughs> I will teach him. He won't be late again. All right. So, yeah. I I just, um, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to kind of follow up on the thinking thing. Because um, for me, it feels much more like emotions, feelings, than thoughts. Thoughts are really pretty easy for me to not believe because they're so full of shit and they're such loops like they're so looped that yeah. i get it i know what the loops are you know yeah. but an example of this is um this week i had to get my cat euthanized and um this is a feral cat that lives outside i've had her for like 10 years I didn't even think I was that attached to this cat, really. But when the vet came, you know, and I was watching her dying and all that, I was just uncontrollably crying, 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 crying. And it it was like it almost felt like the cat was an excuse to be crying, like it wasn't even about the cat. It was like any it, it was just this energy. Do, do you understand what I mean? like an energy that was getting expressed? Yeah through me this being but it was so so sad like horrifyingly sad so I wound up going to the movies because I like to cry at movies so I thought okay I'll go to a movie and have I thought about you Paul because you're always saying like go watch a movie you know when you're like you got all this shit going on just distract it so I thought okay this isn't a thought, it's just a, it's so much feeling, 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 feeling. I said, all right, I'm gonna go to a movie and watch another, have whatever was going on from the movie. And the just movie- Just watch the movie Cats. I know, <laughs> right. Don't right. go to that one. So I went to this movie and it was sad and it was fine. You know, I was happy to be sitting there having my reaction, but, the thing that was really interesting was um, at the end. So I went to the movie by myself and at the end of the aisle, there was a man sitting there by himself and um, the movie's over. And, I, you know, I'm not like loudly crying in the movie, but I guess he could hear me sniffing or, you know, I was crying a little. I was just a little bit crying throughout the whole movie. And um, at the end of the movie, he comes up to me. And he says, I just want to thank you for crying in this movie because it gave me permission to cry, right? So I just sort of stood there and I said, well, that's nice, you know, I'm glad you could cry, you know? And then um, I told him that I had youth, had my cat euthanized that morning. And, and that let, it was like a, an open door it, I, I can't even explain it, but he felt compassion. You know, I brought that memory up and um, and we both started like he reached over to hug me and we both stood there. Now, meanwhile, the movie's over. The movie theater is still dark. Everyone's leaving and the credits are rolling on the screen. And me and this like strange guy, you know, I didn't care. It was I don't even really see people as people. I mean, this is how weird I am now that I can't even talk about that because I don't even know what it is, but <laughs> he's a, a nice being, you know, he's a being and, and we just were hugging uh, for like five minutes, like till the lights came on in the movie theater. And it was like the most real thing. Um, what came up during that, that time and he, uh, so I was crying 
because I talked about the cat and then he was crying and we're both just hugging two strangers apparently crying in this movie theater but it it felt like grace you know it like it was just this beautiful thing and um and then like we left you know then it was finished and um I don't know how to explain it but it, it was like no I don't know how else to explain it I mean at, at one point I, I, felt like it, I, was, honey. I think I think we all heard it you don't have to explain it yeah yeah so it it just so stuff like that happens like all the time here and um I just yeah, I, I don't know. There's a part of that that feels really connected and really good, you know? Um, I did notice that, like, when we I stopped hugging first, and then I was leaving, and I was thinking, this is, this is like, extremely weird, but it's like, okay. And, yeah. and that was the thought, and the thought was seen as the thought, and then I, like, went out and left, and... Um, what I what I realized in the car, I mean, this may be like thought, or it may be, uh, I don't know what this is, but it, but what came to me in the car was how what a great gift that man gave me because so much of the history of Eileen was like nobody let me cry, like all the men were like you know, not wanting me to cry in movies or, you know, whatever. They didn't like crying. They, they weren't, whatever the, the deal was, I did not ever have somebody that was like jointly crying, like being happy to be crying with me. Does that make sense? And I, and I was like grateful for that. You know, that felt like a beautiful experience. And um, yeah. And he felt like he wasn't even like from, I mean, it felt like it was an alien experience in some weird way, like this. Anyway, I don't know. I'm just sharing it because it was unusual and yeah. it felt good, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I feel as an action figure traveling, you know, a lot of us, had a substantial amount of innocence and then running into situations, things that would happen here, I think bring about a lot of disappointment and, and uh, sadness. And then it's beautiful when life gives us an opportunity, even though it was triggered maybe by a passing away, but, uh, but it, it was an opportunity nonetheless to sort of have that that experience that that build up express so that yeah it gets replaced by something else you know yeah. yeah I like I find a lot of sadness pretty rich a lot of the time yeah yeah so yeah but that's great thank you for sharing yeah thank you yeah thank, thank you Eileen hearing that yeah yes just, hey this is, uh, I think the Zoom brings out the best of me in a lot of ways. <laughs> so it's very nice to let people be whatever they seem to be at the time. Yeah, I think it's healthy for all of us. Thank you. It's part of a community. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll say that I have interesting experience that it's like reformed views of what I seem to experience before. And, and like, I wonder if that's what the Course of Miracles is saying. You're gonna have experiences that are reformed from what you gave it before. So therefore forgiving, you know, not to forgive, but you just have it like you're talking about. It was like uh, when, when we were just in Hawaii and, and I was saying goodbye to our friend Judith and we, we kissed goodbye at the airport. It, it, you just had such a similar feeling to what happened with me and my my natal family when I had to say goodbye to them when I was little you know that I you know it was a big story ever since then you know how much I cried on the plane on the way back you know and I never and I had a depression and <laughs> and uh yeah. and then with Judith I it was like you know but and I 
and I didn't have to cry on the plane on the whole way back. <laughs> it was, you know, it was like yeah. so, so similar and yet, oh, this is not going to be being torn away forever from something. Yeah, and it was, it, you know, it, and it wasn't like, it's kind of like that card, right? It's, it's about not, it's about not mattering in one way, right? So you can't really say much about it. <laughs> on the other hand, it was, you know, it was, it was, it yeah. was. Beautiful. Well, again, remember that idea about the Holy Spirit in the Course in Miracles. So the Holy Spirit is like the the mediator or an intervening quality from, let's say, the absolute into the dreaming, you know, into this relative being in Rome, and it's going to take this the information that this the same information that the brain and the mental state. Is, is taking in and collating and then spitting out something from it. It's going to take the same information, but give it a completely different meaning and a yeah. different purpose, so to speak. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. You had the chance to hug Judith and you completed something you couldn't complete with the hugging your natal family when you're a kid. So like that. Yeah. You clean it up. So you don't have, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if people think they're going to leave, um, it's, you know, at the point of death, it's probably better to have the, the, the smallest amount of luggage as possible. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the beauty, I think like the, the beauty of those stories, like what Mike said and what I had, is you can't like choreograph that. Like I could, there was no way, it was clearly like divine intervention, so to speak, right? Like yeah. I didn't even know the guy, it just is how it is. So yes. I love that. It's like a divine replay, retake, you know, redo. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah because there's, uh, what does the course say? There is no sins, there are only mistakes that can be corrected. So yeah, yeah, so. Uh -huh. Same thing with, uh, yeah, a lot of things. It's always what's giving it the meaning is going to make it what it seems, yes? So the mental state has a very limited uh, meaning giving. And then it's wonderful when that's underemphasized and something else is more emphasized. And now you get different meanings coming from some other place. Yeah, that to me... Uh, that's completely, yeah, completely different and a win-win and a whatever, yeah? So, yeah, the action figure is cool in a way as a form of expression, but, best, you know, the best thing for Paul is the realization it's not Paul, yeah? Now, it can't hold that realization, but it can be, it can hold the expression of that realization from what's not paul yeah yeah and then it allows paul to travel later hallelujah what did paul ever want really traveling later really and but it couldn't produce that because it's not see that which is trying to get on and off rides cannot see that it's the ride yeah it's the ride <laughs> yeah so all right, thanks. Thanks, Mike, Eileen, everyone, Eleanor. Anyone else? Last call for hands. I think we have to give a few minutes because I was late, right? So we got to, <laughs> this is like, you know, a pound of flesh for a pound of flesh. Never end to the few minutes. It's forever a few minutes more. <laughs> <laughs> The beautiful thing is about these talks, I forget them completely right after it. <laughs> That's why people go, I can't believe you keep coming back to all these talks. I never come back to a talk. It's always the first one, so to speak. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> All right, anyone else? No. Maybe I should do a mea culpa to each square. Please okay. forgive me for my tardiness. Please forgive me for my tardiness. 
please forgive me for my tardiness. Please forgive me for my tardiness. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end now. Yeah, Mike. Uh, is James here? Is, he, is it okay, James? <laughs> oh no, what's James is fine. Let's go. <laughs> no, just kidding. He's good. I, don't see I him think anyway. James fell asleep. <laughs> I think he fell asleep, James. James, the iPhone. He's out cold. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I didn't. It's not even in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like when you get the message. <laughs> you're looking like you're speaking like a baby. <laughs> so he got the answer he was looking mm -hmm. for. All right. So, Mike, nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for reminding me. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, David. From Melbourne, always good to see you, David. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm not going to call you if I want a couch. That's for sure. Thank you for that. You can have the one I got, by the no, 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 no. <laughs> Robert, Robert F from New Zealand. Tyler, I had the pleasure of meeting Tyler. Nice to see you, Tyler, again. Gary C, there he is. Back to the corner, Gary. Kenneth from in Vancouver. Nice to see you, Kenneth. Yes. Remember, emptiness is form and form is emptiness. Yes. Yeah. Eileen, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Linda, always nice to see you, Linda. Hmm. Tommy from Ireland. He's up late, I guess or up early, one or the other. Uh, Amelia in the kitchen. Nice to see you. Are you doing okay? Where are you from, Amelia? <laughs> She's busy cooking. For some reason, I feel very distant. <laughs> I feel very distant from you. <laughs> uh, Anu. Uh, Anu. I just love saying that name. Anu. Uh, Angie, yeah. Chris G, the man before the, the closet. Stefan on having never left. He's my living example of having never left. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's, you're never going to arrive at in, innocence. The innocence is based on having never left. Yes, yes. Bill from Delaware. Oh, Bill, is that Churchman? Wow. That's a symbolic last name. Yeah. Bill Churchman. I could see your seat assignment from a mile away. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that booster shot. <laughs> You ever see those people that play sports and stuff and they have the perfect name, you know, Daniel Blocker or something like that. It's crazy. Life is always making fun of the whole thing. JP from Vietnam. Nice to see you, JP. Thank you for coming and all the support. Very much appreciate it. Alan O. Alan and his brother. Nice to see both of them. We got Ryan P somewhere lurking, a phone number. Susanna W, an old friend, very young person, but an old friend of mine. Yes. Uh, let's see. And that's Nick on the phone. Oh, there's Nick. Oh, Nick, Hi, I, Nick. Need, I, may, I may need your services, Nick, soon. Hmm. Got to talk to you about a project. I need you to check out electricity. Uh, Anyone else? That's it. Hey, thank you so much again for being here. And uh, we'll be here tomorrow. And also, you know, the retreat, we've we've extended it, but we're only a couple of people away to solidify the retreat to Italy. And if anything happens on the world, uh, hmm. whatever you call it, in the world, it's going to be a complete refund. But if you're wanting to go, it's ready.
And then uh, we're doing a retreat in Colorado for five days, which I better have someone call me before that starts because <laughs> I can't forget that. I got to be in Colorado. <laughs> it won't be as easy as this one. And uh, yeah, so thank you. I hope all is well. Yeah, let's not take ourselves so seriously. See you later. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Good night.